Hey everybody, welcome back to the Belly Blossom. This is week three of my week by week pregnancy series. In each video, you can expect to hear about physical changes, psychological challenges, tips, and experiences that can help you along in your pregnancy. Most women would have already ovulated at the end of week two, but if your cycle is a bit longer, you could be ovulating at the beginning of this week. So refer back to my week two tips about ovulation. So you've tried to get pregnant on or just before ovulation, and now you wait. But what's happening inside? Once the egg is released from the ovary during ovulation, it travels through the fallopian tube. The fallopian tube are the tubes that attach the ovaries into the uterus. If the sperm has met the egg, it will be fertilized in the fallopian tube. It takes the egg one to three days to travel from the ovary to the uterus through the fallopian tube, which is only this long. Those are slow eggs. Sperm, on the other hand, are a lot faster. The fertilized egg is already beginning to develop, dividing fast, cell by cell, and by day six or seven, this fertilized egg is now called a blastocyst. It has found its way to your uterus and will embed itself in your uterine lining. And voila, pregnancy. Right now, your baby is just a clump of cells. And when it embeds itself into the uterine lining, this is called implantation. Before implantation and during and after, it's important to take care of your body by eating nutritious foods, taking folic acid or pregnancy vitamins, and avoiding alcohol, drugs, and cigarettes. If you were not planning to get pregnant and find out next week on week four that you are pregnant, try your hardest to quit any kind of bad habits. There are lots of support systems out there, so reach out to those in your local community or access them online. I want to talk a little bit about folic acid. Enriched flour in North American does contain a small amount of folic acid, but with more gluten allergies out there and more people avoiding eating flour, we need to supplement folic acid in our diet elsewhere. It can be found in prenatal vitamins or you can take it separately and just buy it over the counter at your local pharmacy. If you're young and healthy, 0.4 to 1 milligram per day is sufficient. But if you are closer to 40 years old or have health problems, you can take up to 4 milligrams a day. Folic acid is the most beneficial to have in your system before you get pregnant. So start taking it three months before you plan to get pregnant. It helps with the development of the neural tube, which is the brain, the brain stem, and the spinal cord. Very important. So what kind of mental challenges could you be faced with this week? If you've just started trying, there is a lot of excitement, and I want you to be excited, but also be realistic that it is not common for people to conceive their very first month of trying. If you're close to your 30s, it can take six months to a year to conceive. If you've been trying for a while, this time of month can be hard. You don't know if you should be excited, if you should be sad, and it's okay not to get excited because you've been disappointed for multiple months. But try to remain positive. This could be the month that it happens. One thing that I found helpful this month was just to sit and meditate and have positive affirmations about what could be. Also, continuing your exercise or things that are good for your mental health will also be beneficial. I wanted to share with you this article that I found online about conceiving a boy or a girl. I actually found it quite entertaining, but you can decide for yourself whether you think that it's something that is real or just superstition. Essentially, male sperm are faster and can get to the egg sooner than female sperm, which are slower. But male sperm are weaker. Therefore, if you have sex earlier before ovulation, they may not survive until the egg is released. On the other hand, female sperm are a lot stronger and can live longer. Therefore, if you're trying to conceive a girl baby, you should have intercourse before ovulation. If you're trying to conceive a male baby, you should have intercourse right before or on ovulation. 
The next idea is about the pH of the vagina. A more acidic environment will favor female babies because they are stronger. The male babies will die off in a more acidic environment. In this article, they say that if women orgasm, they release a kind of substance that will make the environment more alkalinic. Of course, this is just all food for thought. They also talk about how tight men's underwear are. If the area of the testicles is too hot, there will be less male sperm because they are weaker. Therefore, wearing tight underwear, tight pants, or having a bath just before intercourse will deliver more female sperm. The last thing they talk about if you're trying for a boy is for your man to have a nice cup of caffeinated coffee so those fast little male sperm will swim kick quicker and meet the egg first. If you want to read this full article, I'll list it below in the show notes so you can check it out. One last tip I wanted to share is if you're using lubricant during intercourse, make sure it is not a spermicidal lubricant. Most lubricants that you can buy at the store are spermicidal, so make sure to look at the label because you don't want that lube killing all the sperm. Well, that wraps up my week three video. I wish your egg and your sperm good luck in meeting, traveling, and implanting.